Hello friends, welcome back. After understanding of the clear concept of OE and all the answers of questions related to OE, in this video, we are going to see how to calculate the OE with the help of practical example in Excel file. So let's begin. Before to start the calculation of the OE in Excel file, let's understand some of the factors in detail. The first factor is total available time. This is the total time available in a month, week or day for which we are going to calculate the OE. Let's say if you are going to calculate the OE for the day, then the total available time will be 24 hours. If you are going to calculate the OE for the week, then the total available time will be 24 hours into 7 days. And if you are going to calculate the OE for the month period, then it will be equal to 30 days into 24 hours when the number of days in a month are 30 days. In this worksheet of OE calculation example, there are the two kinds of cells we can see. The cells which are in yellow color and the other cells which are in blue color. The yellow color cell is indicating that we need to enter the value here. Let's take an example that we are going to calculate the OE for the day and we are having the three shifts of each of the shift is running for 8 hours. So the total available time will be equal to 24 hours which is a multiplication of this number of shifts into hour per shift. The next important factor is plan shutdown. This is a time for which machine is not scheduled to run including breaks like lunch break, tree break and other kinds of breaks. In some cases, if the industries are not having the volume, then there is also the plant shutdown in the organization. That means the shutdown due to the loss of volume also comes in plant shutdown. In our example, let's say we are having the three shifts and each of the shift is having a 1.5 hours of plant shutdown. So the total plant shutdown will be equal to 3 into 1.5 hours which is equal to 4.5 hours. The third factor is scheduled operating time. This is nothing but the subtraction of total available time and plan shutdown. In our example, as the total available time is 24 hours and the plan shutdown is 4.5 hours, then the scheduled operating time will be equal to 24 minus 4.5, which is equal to 19.5 hours. The next important factor into the first section is the downtime loss. This is nothing but the planned and unplanned downtimes in your organization. So this includes equipment downtime, downtime due to the setups and changeovers. Let's say in our example, this downtime loss is two hours. As this cell is indicated into yellow color, we need to enter value here. The next factor is idle cycle time. This is a minimum time required to produce a single unit. In most of the cases, this is given by the machine manufacturer or machine designer or if it is not given by the machine designer, then we need to calculate it by using the time and motion study. In this template, we need to insert the cycle time in seconds. Let's say in our example, we are having an idle cycle time of 30 seconds. As we are going to use the entire data in hours format, then this cycle time is need to be converted into hour, which is equal to 30 divided by 3600, which is coming as 0 0.008. The next factor is operating time. This is nothing but the subtraction of scheduled operating time and downtime loss. In our example, this will be equal to scheduled operating time of 19.5 hours minus downtime loss of 2 hours, which is coming as 17.5 hours. The next factor is net or effective operating time. This is nothing but the multiplication of idle cycle time into total production. For the calculation of the net or effective operating time, we need to insert the values into the second section that is a production data for total production and good production. Let's say in our example, the total production is 1900 and the good production is 1850. So the net and effective operating time will be equal to the multiplication of idle cycle time that is equal to 0 0.008 into total production, which is equal to 1900. And if you do that multiplication, the net or effective operating time will be equal to 15.8 hours. After understanding of total available time, schedule operating time, net operating time, the next important element is speed loss. Speed loss is nothing but the subtraction of operating time and net operating time. In our example, if we calculate the speed loss, which is equal to operating time of 17.5 hours minus net or effective operating time of 15.8 hours, which is coming as 1.7 hours. After inserting and calculating all the values in section 1, 
Let's move to the section 2, which is a production data. In production data, we had already entered total production and good production. So now we can calculate what is a production result. And this is nothing but the subtraction of total production minus good production. In our example, the total production is 1900 and the good production is 1850. So the production result will be equal to 50. Before moving to the third section, let's understand the very critical concept. Some of the organization are going to use total available time for the calculation of overall equipment effectiveness. But some of the organization believe that scheduled operating time is a true metric for the calculation of overall equipment effectiveness. Now the question can be in your mind whether you should use the total available time or scheduled operating time for the calculation of OE. Well, it is depend on what is the philosophy of your organization. If your organization believe that total available time is a good metric, go with the calculation of OE based on total available time. And if your organization believe in calculation of the OE based on the schedule operating time, then you go through the formula which is given into this Excel sheet. Now, if you ask me, then you should go by the calculation of OE by both these formulas. This is because the calculation of OE based on the total available time gives deeper insight to you about losses into the organization. The main reason for explaining this important thing is that I had seen that maximum organization putting their losses into the plan shutdown and this is hiding the bigger issues in the organization. In longer term, this will be more painful for the organization. So please calculate the OE based on the total available time as well as the schedule operating time and track both these OEs. Now let's move to the third section of this OE calculation example and that is OE factors. Here. We are going to see the three important elements of OE and that are availability, performance and quality. How we can calculate the availability rate? Availability rate is nothing but the ratio of operating time to the total available time. So in our example, that will be equal to 17.5 hours divided by 24 hours. That is coming as 72.9 percentage. Performance rate that will be calculated as the multiplication of idle cycle time into total production divided by operating time. In our example, the idle cycle time is 0 0.008 multiplied by total production of 1900 divided by operating time of 17.5 hours. If we do that calculation, then the performance rate will be equal to 90.5 percentage and the quality rate, which is equal to the ratio of good production to the total production. In our example, the good production is 1850 and the total production is 1900. So if you do this calculation, then the quality rate will be equal to 97.4 percentage. The last calculation in this OE calculation example worksheet is the calculation of OE and which is equal to the multiplication of availability, performance and quality rates. If you do this calculation, then it will be coming as 64.2 percentage. This you can also see in graphical representation that availability is equal to 72.9 percentage, performance is 90.5 percentage and quality is equal to 97.4 percentage. And if you do the calculation of all these three elements, then OE is equal to 64.2 percentage. There is another worksheet in this template, which is including all the formulas and what is the relationship between different losses of the OEs. As you are till the end of this video, so I am going to share this Excel template with you. If you want to download this Excel template, then you can get it from the description section. Now, at the end of this video, if you have found this information useful, please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.